Can you, can you? Right, can you hear me us now? The yeah, that's the microphone. Yeah, but it, it has been set up, but for some reason it's not coming up. Any sound now? Okay, right, okay, stop there. Let's see if I can. Right. right, okay. <laughs> this is good, this is. <laughs> right. Now we're live on YouTube with sound as well, so people will be able to hear me talk as well. Okay, um, anybody's listening on YouTube, sorry for the delay, but we have some real technical problems here. Um, you're seeing actually a live shot of Jupiter now taken from one of our telescopes. It's being um, on a 12 inch uh, <laughs> reflector, um, and we're using an ASA Air uh, device on it, so it can actually plate solve and it takes lots of pictures of the night sky so then it's able to find its way around the night sky uh, and now we've actually it's a bit murky here today tonight unfortunately because it is a bit cloudy but we'll be going over to Jupiter soon hopefully and I'll Saturn. tell you when we get there Saturday. right Saturday. Saturn sorry Saturn sorry my, my, my <laughs> I got a little bit carried away there um, so let's see if we can Go to Jupiter. Saturn. 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 But just, just to say I've got that, Jupiter on my mind. <laughs> um, um, point out the red spot before you go. Okay, the great red spot is round about there. You can just see it. You, if you in and out the murk, this is actually cloud round here. So you just see the great red spot round about there. There, yeah, you can just see it. Comes into focus and out of focus. But seeing conditions here are not very good here tonight. <laughs> in uh, Sigma, so um, can you hear me up there? Hello? Can you ask them um, go up there so we want to swing to Saturn? <laughs> yeah, well, I'll quickly recharge my Walkie-talkies, but one's dead. It's not working very well. Is David controlling this or is he? Pardon? Pardon? Is David in, in, um, controlling this? No, I am. Oh, That's why I'm struggling. <laughs> uh, Hugh's at the other, uh, actually um, controlling the Victoria up there. So yes. I'm waiting for him to swing to Saturn. And I'm hoping he's got control of it. So do I take it that we're seeing these pictures from the Victoria? Yes. Right. Is he swinging it to... Um, yeah, they're, they're about 10, 15 seconds behind us. Okay. Internet, like. <laughs> so. uh, right. Well, hopefully we'll be on Saturn soon anyway. So um, it's a shame that the scene could be... Hello. <laughs> it's my boss again. <laughs> Hi, David. Yeah, um, Hugh's controlling it from the Victoria at the moment. Okay. Okay. No, no, it's no, it's already going. Okay. Okay. Don't stop it. I got that. I had. To, I couldn't stop the screen. So yeah, no, it's okay. It's still going. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apologise for all the phone calls because um, we actually only just set all this up 
Uh, the telescope, the actual Victoria Dome was empty shell on Thursday. We put a new pier in for the telescope. We put the telescope in. We put all the technology in on Saturday evening. It was tested only by David. So, but unfortunately, David gone down with COVID and I'm sort of thrown into the deep end how to use it. And I've only used ASL once at home. Uh, although I've tried three times to use it, one, only one night I was successful. So it's a new technology to me to, to learn, but I'm very thankful that David's on the other end of the telephone helping us. And also Hugh, one of our other members, is up at the Victoria though as well, as uh, also helping use it. So we should be seeing, hopefully we should see Saturn soon anyway. So, um, So at the moment, the telescope is taking loads, once it gets to its target, it will take loads of pictures of the stars surrounding it. It will figure out where it is, and then it will make sure it's actually, Saturn is actually dead center of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost the same when you actually start imaging the night sky, you know, because it's the same sort of techniques, you know, because um, the telescopes, we, the other telescopes we've got, once you're on the target, you take a photograph of it, and you may take about a five or 10 minute photograph of a particular object, say like a Rhine Nebula. Mm -hmm. Then you would take about 40 more shots, and yeah, then gradually you start stacking. That's pretty grim. <laughs> it is through cloud, so and then you stack all the images on top of each other until the actual target you're taking photographs comes out very clearly. So don't, don't give up though, because you might be a hole in the clouds in a minute. What's happening now? Um, I'm not quite sure who's controlling it. Yet. Well, it's, it's adjusting the game. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the seeing conditions are quite poor out there now. So uh, you can see now, as you're looking at Saturn, those rings are 178,000 miles wide. So it's huge. But the amazing thing, the actual thickness is, is from, from about four, four meters to a quarter of a mile thick. So they're very thin, the rings on Saturn but they stretch apart and they've just made dust nice, you know, so, and depending on the time of year you want to see them, because sometimes if, if the rings are dead on from the earth, you hardly see the rings. So it's only when Saturn rings are on a tilt with it on the orbit that you actually see the rings. At the moment, you can see the rings of the Saturn is at the angle that we're looking at. The other thing to point out on this is if you look, I'm going to use my finger because I haven't got I'm a pointer. See there, that darkness. That's the shadow of Jupiter on the rings. So the sun is shining on Jupiter. And it's, sorry, Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bug going around, you see. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's, that's the shadow of Saturn on, on, on its rings. So the rings are coming from around the back. Over the front and down there, so you've got that shadow. That comes up quite clear on, on a good night, so you can see that. Are, are they circulating all the time? Rings? Sorry, they, they do go around. They do go around. Yeah. yeah. Um, I say um, Saturn has actually got eighty-two moons, but four yeah. of them, four of the moons are main moons, so they've got more moons. Saturn has got the most moons in the solar system. Oops, it's, it's lost its tracking star. Yeah, well done. <laughs> are you controlling it anymore? Are you, or is it David controlling it now? I didn't realize David was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite, it's quite a lot. Uh, Saturn's just disappeared. Yeah, That's cloud, probably. It is. No, no, it wasn't. It moved. Well, yeah, but it's the tracking. The, the yeah, tracking, there is a cloud there. Yes. Yeah. Well, we had quite a good view of it just now. Oh, okay. I'm seeing something here. I'm not quite sure what that is. It's still visible. So. Still visible. 
Yeah, but there's no stars now, so the guide the guide scopes will not, not be seen. Right, moving it again. It's unusual for it to go like that. Um, I'm just wondering whether the ASA is struggling to find it now. Yeah, I think there's maybe you've got no other feedback. Yeah, there we go. Well, we seem to have uh, got a little bit misty here at the moment. We've uh, lost Saturn at the moment. The clouds are rolling in yet again. So hopefully we'll get Saturn back soon. Um, Uh, while we're waiting, um, what is interesting about Saturn, when you actually look over the North Pole, you look down, the clouds form a, a beautiful pigskin shape because of the way it spins. When the scientists first spotted that, they thought there was something wrong with the cameras. But it's, it's just because it spins every 10 hours, you know, it forms it a beautiful pigskin shape on, 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 the, on the North Pole. Of Saturn. Uh, once again, it's a gas giant, you know, uh, uh, they they think there's possibility of some sort of park, rocket or uh, somewhere on the surface, you know, below the surface. So, what, what about its size compared to Jupiter? Sorry, a Saturn is smaller than Jupiter. Um, now, you could see the spacecraft, which was launched to go around Saturn, um, took seven years to get there. Uh, but it did a rather strange way of getting there because it was launched the Earth, it went to Venus first. As you know, Venus is an inner planet. Yeah. It got a slingshot around Venus, it came back to the Earth, got another slingshot, back to Venus again, then back to the Earth again, then onto Jupiter and onto Cassini. Onto uh, Saturn. The reason it did that was to save fuel so it could extend the actual length of it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, it's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, it soon it's back. <laughs> yeah, it's cloud. Can't, can't do much about that. But at least we've got an idea of where it is. Yeah, <laughs> it's up there somewhere. <laughs> yeah. And the, the other thing is over, over the back here of where where the telescope is looking, uh, Jupiter is also over the trees. And unfortunately, trees tend to give off quite a lot of heat. Uh, they've stored up during the day and then they're going through their energy transfer, turning uh, turning their carbon dioxide into carbon and oxygen, and uh, they generate heat. And there you've got that heat haze coming up off the trees. So that doesn't help matters either. Why are the moons up? Um, yeah, the moons, that moves up. I don't know what the. Why are the moons of um, Saturn is Titan? Oh, now, the actual the density is very similar to the Earth pressure. So if you actually still the surface of Titan, it would be a quite equal pressure as if you were saying the Earth. But unfortunately, it's about minus 285, so it'd be pretty cold there. <laughs> so, where if you're on Venus, it's a similar size, but it'd be equivalent to being about uh, a thousand feet under the sea. The pressure is so great on Venus, you know, uh, and uh, only um, two spacecraft have ever landed on um, Venus. That's two Russian spacecraft. They sent five altogether. Three of them found on the first attempt because 
is so hot on the surface of Venus that if you had a bar leading on the hand, it would melt. That'd be, that'd be um, after you've evaporated <laughs> on the heat. Because, you know, it's so hot, it's got one runaway greenhouse effect, the same way you describe it. But the spacecraft lasted 30 minutes before the lens cap fell off the camera. That was the end of the spacecraft as well. So, um, so uh, early astronomers really thought Venus was a second home, you know, but the only planet which we could possibly go to now is Mars. And the only problem is the atmosphere is so thin on Mars that you'd have to wear a spacesuit all the time. It's freezing, you know, below freezing every single day. So, so if you want to volunteer to go, you're more than welcome. You'll be living in a tin capsule, you know, and, and you'll be able to go out for a day's walk as long as you've got a spacesuit on. So, um, but Cassini, when they when the spacecraft went to Saturn, it was absolutely incredible mission. It, I think it lasted five five years or even more, and. Uh, it took it absolute some amazing images of, of the rings of Saturn and of all the moons. So, there are moments that you can see the band of the atmosphere on Saturn. And it has got bands not as strong as the ones you saw on Jupiter earlier on, but they're, they're definitely there. Well, what causes those? Well, it's just the rotation of the planet. Uh, it, and it's different at different latitudes of the planet. So around the equator, it's going different to the uh, different speed to what it is at the top, and that generates those bands. Yeah. I say um, we take one year to go around around the sun. Um, Saturn takes twenty nine years because it's so far out, you know. So um, so the, the orbit. I think it's minus about two hundred eighty five Fahrenheit. So. You wouldn't have to worry about if you had a fridge on there, you wouldn't have to about putting anything in the freezer. <laughs> yeah, a day on on Saturn is 10 hours 40 minutes, so uh, roughly so 10, 10 hours 40 minutes rather. So that is the actual speed it's spinning. We take 24 hours to do one rotation, uh, Saturn takes 10 hours 40 minutes. So that's going off center. So let's see if I'll move that over a bit. What's going on, my? This is the marvelous thing about this program because um, you can have your telescope outdoors and you can be sitting beside a roaring fire in your living room controlling your telescope because you can do all the imaging from here. Uh, uh, you can. There's oh, the it's been stolen again. <laughs> What's happening here? This is the telescope doing this. If it was clearer, would you get some colour in it or not? Um, not yeah. If you you would, if you use a colour camera in perfect scene conditions, you see a variation of colour, right, okay. but you wouldn't see a wonderful colour because all the fantastic photographs you see of nevers and everything, we had filters, so we would take 20 shots in red, 20 shots in blue, 20 right. shots in up, and all different shots. To get so gradually like that. you start building up, yeah, like that. Yes. Um, that's one of NASA's pictures. There's only um, uh, five of those in the UK that was actually donated to us by, by NASA, which was quite handy. That we we saw it being advertised, so we got in, we got in quickly for the museum because <laughs> they tend to get all the best, best things. But yeah, so that's the result of multiple filters. Yeah, yeah, and that uh, that could be up to about 100, 200 shots of about ten thirty minutes or even an hour. You know, so um, it's, to build up a photograph, um, I've got this camera here. I can't actually show you because it's on my computer. But I, I, with that, I can take our shot of the Milky Way. So what I do is I set the camera up, up outside, and um, but to take a shot, any photographs of the night sky, you have to track the night sky. 
Because if you set that camera up to look at phone line, you use left it five minutes, you get star trail. You just get straight line. So you have to track the night sky. So we've got all various telescopes up here, over here, all capable of tracking the night sky. But because I wanted some, I can use my camera on because I travel abroad a lot and I like to take images of the night sky. I need something simple to be able to track the night sky. So I looked at all the technology out there. So I went back to clockwork. Uh, and um, you literally, and this is the device here, it's your arm here, and you wind it up, it lasts one hour. Uh, that, <laughs> that little device there, you have to power align it on the pulsar. Once you've done that, then you can put your camera on bulb exposure. On that particular camera, I control it from my phone, so I can image where I want over my iPad. So, and it will take long exposures up to about up to about 15, 20 minutes to be the maximum exposure I could do with that device. Uh, so gradually, when uh, I was actually photographing the Milky Way from here, um, actually I could fire it up and show you what to do to that bit up there. Um, I can actually take a photo of the Milky Way as it rises above the horizon here. So, um, so that, that mount has gone to Alaska with me, it's gone all the way down to Mediterranean for two weeks. Couldn't use it once because the ships were wrong. We lit up that Christmas tree. <laughs> so it did travel well. I'm going to try the moon now. All see, right. Uh, what that's like. That may be a little bit on the bright it's side. Be very bright. Um, we won't get the sort of detail we get. If it was sort of dark, then it would be, if you get some really nice or or less, you get some really nice picture of the craters in that. But we'll see what comes in. Yeah, it probably needs a filter on it as well. If he's going on the moon. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah, There's if that. he goes right to the edge, because it's pretty. It, it can it? always, uh, at least with the camera, you can shift the game substantially. It's going to Saturn. Did, did he no. say he was going to the moon? No, he's going to the moon. It's a bit like you two is getting the names wrong. So what does this guy actually do physically? He's just up there with his computer on the, literally on the telescope. And what he's doing is he's on the screen, he'll have an image of the star oh, okay. field. And would, the things on the star field would be saying, right, I want to go to there. And then the computer takes over and does the calculations to determine where it's got to go to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it was a clearer sky tonight, um, right. they, they could do the same. They can that do the same thing and look at is we can look at the response to that. Um, and you can um, see two of the arms here, millions upon millions of stars there. And this is our galaxy, and that was taken with that camera. So you don't have that amazing technology to be able to take an image of our galaxy. And that was taken from the grounds of this observatory. Um, we was actually out there late at night from eight o'clock to four o'clock in the morning to count meteors coming through the atmosphere. We caught two the whole night, <laughs> and plus a very bad cold. But uh, that's how we just see the two wrongs of our galaxy there. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have to stop there. <laughs> I'm forgetting I'm using a computer and not an iPad and I'm poking it so you why it's not definitely where I want it to go. That's it. I want to take more tablets. Now, <laughs> yeah, I know I have to. Now, uh, I was also imaging that at night and I was trying to catch me to write, but then clouds rolled in. 
And I've actually named this now the hand of God. You can see the fingers. You can clearly see the fingers. He's probably pointed to me where the, the meter was coming in. So is that a meter in the top right? No, that's a plane. You can always tell a plane uh, because when you zoom into it, you see a little white light. It'd be red, white, red, white. And that will tell it's a plane. So quite often when he's um, firing up to get to the meter, the meter is coming in, you think, ah, oh, good one. Oh, it's a plane going over because we get, do get a lot of aircraft over here because we are on one of the main flights to Europe. So, but we do get the amazing. Um, Alan, do you think you're ringing and telling us? We're still going to Saturn, I thought we were going to the moon. No, no, it's, it's all right. It's definitely. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We do get amazing sunsets here on this observatory. This was taken. That's, somebody said to me, come out, see the sunset. So we rushed out and I quickly grabbed my camera just to get, and just once in a blue moon, you get these perfect seeing conditions mm -hmm. and uh, you, you get this beautiful sunset up here. So. I wish I could watch the computer with a touch screen. I want to do it. Is it a What's coming up in the winter skies now is Orion in the, the Orion Nebula, where our stars have taken over, blown off all the gases. And uh, this is a shot I did uh, last year for the Orion Nebula. You can see all the gas. It's actually a beautiful thing to actually look through, you know, uh, look at through a telescope because you can clearly see the actual gas. But once you connect a camera up and start taking images of the night sky, then it's a total different ball game altogether. So, can you see all right back there? Yeah, very lovely. That's the Orion there, you know, so it's, it's just coming at three o'clock in the morning. I was up at three o'clock. Uh, the other day, and it's just only the horizon where I live. I'm very lucky that uh, I live in Honiton, I live on fairly high up, and that looks like the moon. <laughs> um, I live very high up, and I can see right across the valley to where the farmers from bring the cattle up, but the moon always rises there, so, and also Orion rises there as well. So, uh, but I have to wait till about midnight before I can start. Because my observatory is in the back of, back of the garden, you know, so. Now, the only problem I've got with my observatory is every time somebody comes down to me, and they look out the window in my back garden, they say, oh, Alan's got a jacuzzi out there. <laughs> Because I've got it set up. <laughs> so I've got it, so I just pull all my telescopes out. Uh, and uh, so is there a jacuzzi in there, or yeah. are you just wounded your wife? Yeah. All my telescopes are on the wheel, so I wheel them out, close the door, put the heating on side, very, very heating on very low these days, <laughs> cost electricity. But um I've got the log cabin and I've got some composite, composite decking out there, so we will the telescope out, all locks in position, and it does work fairly well, you know, so I'm able to take all the photographs of the night sky. How are they doing up there? Yeah, it's not, it's, um, it's trying to get on the moon. Just how cloudy is it outside now? It, have, it's, it's okay. Okay, straight up. The moon is clear. The moon is okay. Uh, it's good enough. Nice. I will keep talking. Um, 
Now, but before I put the log cabin up, I, I want to build a new observatory. All right, so I don't mind what you build, as long as you don't have to lift up the Okay, well, so I came up with this design, but she did veto it. <laughs> I, I really don't know why she videoed it. It's, it, it's an extremely large telescope that she's building now. It's going, I think, 40, 40 meters. The mirror is going to be 40 meters in size. You can tell how big it is when the car, but my wife objected to it. I really I couldn't quite grasp it. But it's just got sense. <laughs> and maybe it's because I have all the other houses around. <laughs> Because a um, target, the moon is, when it's a full moon, it's not very good to look to image at all because it's so bright and even with a lot of filters on. So you need the moon when it's on the first phases, then you can get some incredible images. Um, this one I took only a, a couple of months ago, that one. Um, so I'm able to, to actually zoom in right onto the craters looking. Craters looking into craters. And when you look at the moon, then the, the craters, although they're called craters, they're actually formed by asteroid impacts. Uh, for millions of years ago, asteroids were <laughs> hitting all the planets, including the Earth, the moons, uh, the miracles. <laughs> oh no, they lost it. We are struggling tonight. Anybody on YouTube, I do apologize, but the same conditions here are very poor. Uh, we're hoping that the clouds are going to clear a bit. We're trying to go to the moon at the moment, but um, we're, we're struggling to do that as well. So we did go to Jupiter earlier on and Saturn, uh, but ho hopefully we'll be able to... Um, are they still trying to go to... Yeah. You go. Yes. Okay. Okay. Bye. The other thing we around the Milky Way, there's global clusters. These are formed of stars around our solar system, around the galaxy, rather. And, uh, and they came up to about a million stars. Uh, but you know, this is N13. So it's just a global cluster. Actually, they are beautiful to look through a telescope. All these telescopes are really capable of doing them, but they would be quite small in the eyepiece of a telescope. But obviously, I'm using a camera here to actually image the actual um, global cluster. Uh, it's M13, which is the most famous one we go to because it's a it's, it's, most beautiful one to look at, but there's lots of them out there. Um, some nights, if I'm a bit boy, I just go to the first <coughs> and hunt it to see how many I can find one night. But I'm a little bit restricted because I've, I've got a chimney in the way or a tree in the way or something in the way, but something from me to complain about anyway. So <laughs> they're having trouble getting to the moon, aren't they? <laughs> Our nearest galaxy to us is the Andromeda galaxy. It's two point. All depends what book you read, the measurements are all different. But it's approximately between 2.2 2.9 million light years away. So just down the road a little bit. I uh, took this image only two weeks ago, and that's the Andromeda galaxy. And the dwarf dwarf galaxy, that's M31, and that's M32. Yeah. And that is a bigger galaxy than the Milky Way. So I don't, I don't really think it's in focus. Much it's bigger galaxy. I don't think it's in focus. Is it? So I don't know whether it's just annoying. That's the two sisters galaxy. It's in the Milky Way. It's obviously other way. Sorry, it's white. Within the Milky Way. Yeah, Milky Way is the name of our galaxy. We need to move on to an edge. Yeah. 
which is for, for to an edge and see if you can get an edge. I think that's what you had it on. The trouble is you say numbers like that. It's very hard to well, grasp. It's not. So, yeah. Where is the water talk? That was, um, um, believe it or not, that was taken on the telescope, that diameter. I was testing out a small guide cell at that time. I was looking at the not on my main telescope. So uh, I'm eager now to try my main stone out on it because I've, I've only in the last three weeks upgraded my telescope, you know. So uh, amazing what you can buy on housekeeping money, I always say, you know. It's, <laughs> well, the thing was, you know, the ASM, which is only a box this size, that thing, is a fantastic bit of technology to find its way around the sky. I managed to buy it for 280 pounds, but within two weeks of buying it, it's gone up to 320, and now it's just gone up to 340, I noticed. So, because they've got such demand for it. And this is, um, that's my main telescope there. This is a small telescope here that I actually took the Andromeda Galaxy with. And that's just that small telescope. The Andromeda Galaxy was taking that small telescope there. And, and it was a 10 minute exposure on it. And I wasn't using my main, that's my main process. I was just learning how to use this program. Are they struggling up there, Bill? That's the that's the test I actually use. Yeah. That's my main stuff So uh, that's an 8-inch one, but I have got a big up a 12-inch one as well. Most batteries are just about it's not been used for a couple of years, they've mostly died. Yeah. Electronics. <laughs> How's that one? You know, so it's not a It looks it's, like it's moving. Yes, he's moving it. So. How, how is he moving it? Yeah, yeah. He's okay. trying to find a, he's trying to find a, what what little terminator there is. There isn't much yeah. actually. It's yeah, it's if you're still on Zoom, it's the seeing conditions are pretty poor up here now. So uh, hopefully it get back. The, um, what do you think, Alan, the the walking talking was fine. So if you would oh right. Sorry, yeah, my, my one died. Yeah, yeah. I charge up. I only thought of it about half past four. I could bring the be talkies up to control them, but I only took, I only had about 30 minute charge on them. So. The trouble with really seeing conditions of this fan, it's very hard to know what to do. Most of them with me and Gary, I'll take you down to the Kensington telescope. Gary will take the other one to the is that okay? You take the ones with Yes, yes, they've got one just here. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, so if you want to come with me, those that were with me originally, we'll take that now and then I'll, the others can come down afterwards. Well, we're going to go this way. No, no, not us. Who's controlling the mouse? Is it? Oh, oh, yes, she's going to try to get the target. Is that right? Are we with this yeah, or what, what, where are we oh, going?
cloud here now, so um, it's not due to clear at all tonight. So apologize uh, for, for this, but uh, we'll probably do it another day if, if you'd like to join us at the Normal Look Observatory. Yeah, stop sharing. Yeah. Oh, can I show them on my computer? Because there's only there's no one in there. Nah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they all gone? <laughs> What is the time? It's only 10 to 9, so we'll give them this talk. All right. Okay, we'll close that down there. Oops. Sorry, sister. <laughs> 